news now. Today is actually February 1st, hard to believe, and of course it marks the beginning of American Heart Month, and one local hospital wants to remind us how to potentially save a life. Yeah, that's right, Trevor. Well, KTSM 9 News reporter Jasmine Perry, she's live in our data center this morning to tell us the difference between giving CPR to an adult versus a child major difference there. Jasmine, what can you tell us about that? Good morning, Brenda and Trevor. So one thing I learned is that when it comes to giving CPR on babies, um, you don't have to, you know, you know, to hold their nose and give breaths on their mouth. What you'll have to do is cover their mouth and nose with your mouth and watch his or her chest go up and down. It takes five rounds to save somebody's life. 27, 28, 29, 30. In life or death situations, it is extremely important to be ready if someone is in need of life-saving measures. For an adult, it's 30 compressions to two ventilations. For a child, infant, if it's a two person CPR, two people doing performing CPR on a child or an infant, um, it would be 15 compressions to two ventilations. If it was just me by myself with a child or an infant, it would be 30 and two. Matthew Crawford, the education coordinator from the Hospitals of Providence, demonstrates what exactly you need to do when it comes to performing CPR. Stay calm, cool, relaxed. Um, you can't help anybody if you're panicking. According to the American Heart Association, children as young as nine years old can learn and retain CPR. The importance of CPR is that you want to go ahead and just assess the situation, know what you're looking at. Um, the, one of the main things that you want to place your that individual uh, on a flat surface, on a hard flat surface, particularly not a bed, but actually the floor. Paying attention to breathing signs and checking the pulse, no more than 10 seconds. Uh, if you don't see those things, you don't feel the, the carotid pulse, the radial pulse, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, initiate CPR. Crawford says if you do not see chest movement, open the patient's shirt before ventilating and make sure the airway is open by lifting their chin up. Placing your hands on top of each other with straight arms and hands in the center of the chest while compressing fast 30 times using your weight over your shoulder. Adding that an automated external defibrillator is also handy since it can guide you when performing CPR. Attach the, to the patient on the chest, upper right side and, the, and underneath the arm over here on the rib cage and you would just listen for the AED's instructions to go ahead and go from there. As for a child choking, Crawford urges people to not scoop the object out of their mouth with your finger. Instead, depending on the size of the child, five back thrusts, five chest thrusts in an upward motion. Make sure you have a proper seal and that chest should be right. Now, Crawford does tell me to have your CPR certification. You do not need to be in the medical field. Uh, most importantly, if you're a teacher, you work at a gym, or even a stay-at-home parent, having that CPR certification will help you all in the long run if anything ever happens. Reporting in the data room, I'm Jasmine Perry, KTSM 9 News. Hi, Jasmine. Thank you so much for that.